This is a tutorial I should probably have done quite a while ago, and sorry about the delay on this one. I just really wanted to run through and show you how some of the scaling can be done in Benko, and how you can apply that to shapes and images, and basically what the best way of doing it is. Just letting you know as well, you can turn your grid on down here, and you can adjust the colors of them here as well, including the opacity. Um, I just thought it was a bit too, it's a bit too uh, jarring. So I just knocked this down to five and I think, yeah, I just think it looks a lot nicer. Okay, so if we just start off with some images and I just wanted to get the size of this image that I've dragged in. So I can just click on my Benko box button here in the middle and that will convert it to a Benko box. And then I can just drag the image back into there. I'm just going to quickly set up some guides. So I'm just going to hold down S, select these two nulls, and I'm going to draw another, select two, these two bottom nulls, and I'm going to hit the horizontal one. Cool. So now I can just move these independently. Okay, so if we open up our shader here, we've got this option for scale mode. And at the moment, it is fit contain. So if we bring that up, it's going to scale down. If we bring this across, it's going to scale down. And with this image, it looks okay because these, this border here is uh, just repeating those pixels. So at the moment, the scale mode is set to fit contain and the tiling X and Y are set to clamp. So if I just move this, you can see that it's going to shrink across both X and Y to fit into it. So we've got some other options here as well. So we just go fit width. And that way, when we move this one to the, uh, on the X, um, it's going to scale with it. But if we move the Y, nothing changes. And as you'd expect as well with the height, same thing. It's going to scale for Y and nothing's going to change here. So just play around with those. It might take a, a few different attempts to find the one that you need. Uh, and think of the last six months, Fit Cover has also been added. And this is kind of really handy to automatically scale your image um, for you. So personally, I think Fit Cover will probably work for a lot of your uh, work for a lot of your needs. So now I'm going to show you how you can do it pretty much in using Benko, just using these um, the same scale options. So what I've done now is I've just clicked on create an image button. And if we load that up, we can see that it's got the position set, but it hasn't got a size set. And it's also created this image bounding box for us. So basically with these two options here, you've got the option to scale X and scale Y. So since we're going to drag across in the X, we just hit this. And it's going to scale to, the, to X to fit that. It works the same way as the other image shader option. If you drop this down, you can see the manipulator and the little math node that does the magic. So if I do this with the Y, I can scale the Y. So if you select an image or a shape and then click on one of these buttons and nothing happens, it's because you don't have an image bounding box. So create one, you click on your Benko and then click the image, or you can just create one manually and just link it up. So I've just created a couple of shapes and some text, and I'm just gonna quickly show you how you can scale a few things. So if I just bring in my, okay. So if I just jump back into Benko, I've got my text selected, and then I can just click on pin. And I'll quickly create another guide over here. So what that pin does is it allows me to now move this and keep that Hello World pinned into this corner. If we open this up, you can see that it's added a little offset and it just saves us a few clicks, which is pretty handy. Okay, so with that text selected, I can then just come in here and click Scale Y so that when I bring this in, it shrinks down. Super easy. So I'm going to try something similar, but for this rectangle at the bottom. I want the rectangle to stay at the bottom, 
uh, and keep the same height, but I just want it to stay at the bottom. So I'm going to click on this align tool up here. And I'm going to move it up so that the pivot point is at the bottom. And then I'm just going to drag this close to the bottom uh, or close enough. And this other little button over here next to the eye is our bounding box constraint. So if I click on that, it's going to create our bounding box constraint. And you can see these measurements here so we can uh, tweak these as needed. So it was on 99%, so I can just drop that down to 100%. And when I move this, it's going to stick to it. But if I move this, it's still going to keep that same width. So here I can just open up my image bounding box and grab my width and put my width in here. So now when I move it around, it's going to keep that same width. For this ellipse shape, I'll keep it there and I'm just going to click on that same same option there for the uh, constraint and that's just going to keep it proportionally where it was. This is obviously I'm not going to use these scales. I'm going to use one of my scripts that's in my uh, with my with my mini scripts. So I'm click clicking on these first and the last nulls here, and I go up to scripts, mini scripts, and PK measure. Okay. So I'm going to grab my ellipse shape, and I will grab that number range and I'll just pop it into scale and everything goes crazy. So what we wanted to do here, I'll just shrink that right down so we can have a rough idea of what's going on. So basically when we move these out now, it's going to affect the scale of that, of that circle based on the distance between these two nulls. which is pretty cool. So I can change this to 0.25. So that way we can cap the largest, uh, we can cap how big it gets and how small it gets as well. So it does give you a bit more flexibility than just using these inbuilt scale options here. So that's something to, uh, something to consider. So I showed you how you can link this bounding box for this image width you can link that to other things as well such as like the text uh, box width as well so that if you've got a whole lot of text in here uh, it will it will drop down a line so i'll just quickly show you what i mean so we've got our size width here and i'll pop that in there so when this gets smaller it's going to jump onto another line I'll quickly jump into here and get rid of the scale options. Boom. Um, so what you might want to do here is add an expression and I'm just going to go minus 50 and see if that works. Yeah, so maybe even a bit more. So yeah, just being able to link things in the cool cavalry way. Um, yeah, it, it, I just feel like it gives you a hell of a lot more options. And I can just change that a little bit there as well. But yeah, not a very exciting tutorial, but hey, cool. Thanks a lot.